antes. All right, we'll get going. It's 302. Looks like we have a couple more people coming in. So I want to thank everybody for that. And real quick, Anna, good morning or good afternoon, Naomi. Hi. Anna, could you give our little um our little speech yeah. about translation? I, I do think we have one person. Yeah. Buenas tardes, Estela. Uh, nada más recordarle de uh, es cambiar al canal en español. Yo sé que usted ya sabe, pero nomás quiero confirmar que sí está oyendo la junta en español. I don't know that she heard me. Well, we'll try. We're going to do some introductions here in just a minute. So um, I just want to check everything is going all right with the Spanish translation, though, Anna. Let me check, yeah. Great. Um, with that, we'll start doing introductions. My name is Jamie Holt. I'm with the Valley Air District. I run the outreach team. Uh, let's go to Zong. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Zong Song, and I'm part of Jamie's outreach and communications team. It's good to be back. Cass? Cass? Hi, my name is Cassandra Melching, and I'm with the Valley Air District. I'm part of the outreach and communications team under Jamie. We'll go to Anna. Yeah, same with me. I'm part of Jamie's team. I'm a bilingual OC rep here for the Mallory District. Kick it to Brad. Hi, this is Brad Dawson. Uh, I'm the supervisor over the air monitoring program for all the AB617 communities. And I have to say, I apologize. For some reason, my camera is on, but it will not show my picture. Oh, something's, something's happening. I don't Something's know not working. No, this is when it says it's on and it just gives a black screen. So I apologize. Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, Naomi. Hi, everyone. Buenas tardes. Naomi Martinez. I am a CSC member for Fresno, um, um, one of the EJ organizations, Central California Environmental Justice Network. Great. Megan. Hi, I'm Megan McKay. I'm part of um, the Monitoring and Laboratory Division at CARB. Great. Ed? I'm Ed Ward. I'm CSC member for Fresno, and uh, I work for Valley Pacific. Great. Jennifer? Hi, I'm Jennifer Magana, and I'm with the Office of Community Air Protection. I'm with Brian. Great. Estella? Sí, mi nombre es Estela y soy residente de Fresno. Mi nombre es Estela y no. Gracias. Yeah, Fresno. Thank you. Isabel. Sí, mi nombre es Isabel Vargas y soy residente de, de Fresno. Isabel Vargas, she's a resident of Fresno. So. Uh, John. Hi, everybody. John Stegnero, program manager at the Air District in the Air Quality Science and Planning Department. Great. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, we just want to follow up and go through some of the action items we had from our last meeting. And uh, everyone should have received these. They uh, got emailed out. They're in both English and Spanish, so I'll bring both up. Let me share my screen. So since our last meeting, we took some of the action items that had been requested by this committee, and we are working on some of them. Um, one of the things was asked to make uh, air quality information a little more front and center on the AB617 website, and that was done. We're still working on, um, it's right here. So even if you're in a different language, you can still see 
that the um, link is right there on the main page. Maybe, can I go back to, there we go. And then when you click on it, we put um, the different communities. Oh, no, I'm, I'm stuck on, maybe for the rest of my life, it will be on in Spanish. Um, the interactive map of the monitors. Um, so when you click here, you go straight to the map and you can see what's being done. We are working on making this better and making it even more front and center, following some of the recommendations that this community had. Um, let me go back. Um, we also emailed the, based on the recommendations of this group, the CSC, to see if they had some personal experiences that they could share. Um, fortunately, some of the committee did already share some of their experiences at our last um, subcommittee meeting, so that was great. Um, we did have Ivanka who submitted her experiences, and we've actually followed up directly with um, that particular school that she mentioned, and we're working on getting a meeting set up between uh, that school's administrative staff, um, some of the teachers, and some of our air quality staff, but that's something that um, we definitely are going to continue to work on to make sure that uh, that that we are especially reaching those schools where um, folks are telling us there's a you know there's a need there's a need right now um, in addition to that we drafted this little outreach strategy that um, uh, hopefully you all got the chance to look at um, again we have it in spanish as well I'll bring it down to spanish for a few minutes um, then the next thing we did so we've been working with schools uh, for several years, we even worked with um, the uh, Central California Asthma Collaborative for a few years, they ran our program. And we just wanted to, to kind of do a little snapshot of where our schools were, if I can get it to come up. And I'm not expecting you to look at this in any detail because we haven't really gone, gone through it and, and, and parsed it out yet. But um, here's the list of the schools that are in the food footprint. And you, you can see one of the things about this AB 617 community that's very exciting is we've got schools in Central Unified, Fowler Unified, we've got some of the, um, the just Office of Education schools. Let me pull those over, you can see what they are, um, which are the charter schools and or some of the kind of, um, I'm trying to think of the correct term, the, the non-typical schools. Um, like the special education schools or some of the um, technical schools. We then have a lot of Fresno Unified schools. We, of course, have Orange Center Elementary. We have uh, one school that's a Raisin City Elementary School and then Washington Unified. And then um, a couple of schools that, that really don't have an actual campus. They're more of an online school, which are those last two ones. Um, or actually that last one is a preschool and the one right before it is a kind of a, um, a school from home kind of situation. So one of the things that um, we kind of want your input on now is we want to start reaching out to these schools. I will tell you that we have not done a ton of outreach to the schools since COVID. Um, COVID was such a strange and challenging year and a half for everybody that uh, we kind of put our program on hold. Um, kids weren't in schools uh, a lot of the time and there really wasn't a place to go to outreach them. But now what we're looking at is beginning to go one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if there are schools that, that steering committees want us to put at the top of the list, we will definitely do that and begin to outreach to them. Um, and then one of the things that we wanna discuss with you all is um, what, what kind of outreach tools or strategies would make the most sense? Um, and do any of you wanna start meeting with schools with us? We're happy to have that, that happen. And then we wanna, of course, be reporting back to the entire CSC. So we've got a couple of ideas about outreach strategies, but before I even get there, I'd just love to get some feedback on 
this little bit of a plan that we put in place. It's just a draft. Um, we wanted, of course, to present it to you all and get your input. And with that, um, I will turn it back over to this group, Naimi. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I think that's a great start. I, I do have a couple of questions, if you don't mind uh, kind of explaining briefly, because I, I do, you know, I appreciate that you mentioned that your you average to the schools was done through CCAC, but I, since uh, that control was uh, not renewed with them, you had an in-house person. So for me to come up and recommend something, I would like to know what's what's happening right now. Since you took the program in-house, do you have a designated person or people for that matter, more than one that they, because the county is big, the county down. Valley. Uh, the valley is big, right? You know, and obviously I don't want you to give us a full detail of all the valley, but at least where these communities are, are located. So do you have like, for instance, a person that reaches out to, to chapter and then a, a person that reaches out to, to the Fresno schools, obviously with all the districts that you mentioned, um, what's what I, I'm trying to understand what is the, the system that is in place to let uh, a school districts know about currently battered quality days. So, so if I have a battered quality day or you predict that it's going to be one, this person talks to who in the schools, and if you have an understanding of how the information fault or you know flows between that contact that the our district has and the, the different schools so i think that i my presumption is that there's a lot of broken links in in how that information flows based on what i have heard from uh, the different schools and parents but you know if you can explain that uh, that would be very helpful at least for me Sure, and Zong and Cass, you're both um, welcome to jump in at any time. The short answer to your question is, yes, we have three people specifically that break up the valley, and I can't remember who has which. Zong, I know, has has Fresno County, and I feel like one other county. I think they each have like two or three counties. And prior to COVID, there was ongoing calling, uh, tracking information, going out to schools, dropping off materials, uh, giving uh, presentations to schools. And each of the teams really was, ta or each of the individuals was tasked with developing a personal relationship with someone at the school. Really, that's what it comes down to. Um, we have, in the past two years, that dropped off. And, and our next step, if, if the committee's on board with it, and we've already done a little bit of this up in the north, is to um, re-engage schools on that personal level. And I know both Zong and Cass um, are fully aware that it, one of the challenges getting someone at a school site and making sure that that person either stays at the school site or passes the information on to whoever's replacing them. And usually we would spend the first couple of months of the school year doing that. Um, this year, it just with COVID, um, uh, the schools were spinning and it was a little difficult to get a captive audience. What we're finding with the handful of phone calls that we've made recently is that they're ready and they would like to have this conversation now. Zong and Cass, do you want to just kind of walk through the group what you would do when you connect with the school what kind of information you give them what you try and get them kind of signed up for and how they would get our information you know after that initial phone call or meeting to make sure that they're making good decisions for the kids sure so fresno county is uh, my county for uh, the health air living schools program and for the most part we've been doing outreach um sometimes through email, but uh, with Fresno County uh, being so large, you know, when we get the opportunity, especially we've been utilizing the calendars to um, meet with, uh, you know, the administration, uh, the staff, the front uh, uh, office, and that has been an, um, a great way to kind of have a one-on-one -on -one introduce um, myself or, you know, our program to um, to the front office and they will usually let us know who's the best person to talk to at each school, uh, whether it's the principal or you know uh, the vice principal, whoever it is that's maintaining or monitoring um, air quality at the school. In general, a lot of the school districts like Fresno Unified, even Clovis Unified, um, a lot of those school districts have one main 
a point person at the di uh, school district level who will monitor um, air quality and then send out that information to the schools. And that's what we are hearing um, from uh, Special Ed Fresno Unified, um, uh, that they have a point person uh, at the district level that monitors and then sends out notifications when air quality changes. Um, of course, each school, um, you know, they can definitely have a principal or, or like a, uh, a coach who sign up for RAN, and we definitely encourage that. Um, so with some of the smaller school districts like Orange Center and um, uh, while Fowler is bigger, a little bit, it's small, but um, they do have more schools, uh, you know, going to Malaga has been uh, pretty um, uh, welcoming. And so um, I've definitely built a relationship with the principal there and they've been uh, pretty pretty awesome at, um, at uh, providing you know, information to their schools to their parents and teachers and uh, letting us come in when there are opportunities to, to engage with the parents. Um, a lot of the schools, um, the next step, my hope is to hopefully get them on board with the um, no idling. That's been a little bit trickier because um, you know, you're, while the, the material are free, the, the big signs, um, you know, having them installed is, is uh, it, we're finding that it's not always easy. Some of the schools have them. Um, but you know they don't put them up for whatever reason. Um, there's sometimes some miscommunication between the district level and at the school level. So it's um, kind of you know working and trying to um, answer any questions that the schools uh, you know may have about you know the no idling uh, program. But um, you know that is one area uh, you know we, we hope to kind of get the word out more in the next steps. But you know we are always um, out there trying to encourage schools and uh, parents as well as you know, coaches to um, monitor air quality, whether that's um, downloading the app or going onto my RAN. So whenever we get questions or when we go out and do presentations, that is definitely something that we encourage and show parents um, as well as teachers if they you know have questions about downloading or have issues of downloading the app. So that's where we do um, as much outreach as we can. Um, when you were doing this outreach with these schools, were they informed? Uh, let's say that you know you cover Fresno. Did you inform the the people that you had contact with about these additional monitors that were put in some of the schools for AB six one seven and where to find that information? Was Edison, if I remember correctly, um, um, I actually had a relationship and uh, honestly, and I mean, I haven't had a chance to go back um, since pandemic, but I did have a relationship with um, one of the programs there where I did go in. Um, at that point, uh, the monitor was not in there yet. And so, um, but I did, you know, um, go in and do presentations to the, they had like parent workshops. And so I would go in there and definitely share the information about our grants as well as you know where to access the air quality information on our website but, and on on our app but i mean that's definitely we've heard from this community that you want us to fold that in there and that's definitely something that uh, we're planning to do um we do give them just so you all can see th this is basically what we're asking schools to do when these levels are hit that they take these actions and they align, I know with, um, I think what SJV Air uses and what some of the other folks use. So we're asking for them to take action and it will be very easy for us to link this to the community air monitoring data that is coming, especially, I mean, if they have a monitor on their school, that's just, I think has all sorts of great potential. So I just wanted to add that. And another resource that we offer too is um, these air quality, when air quality deteriorates, yes, there has to be a plan in place, but a lot of that comes from the district and actually having that. And we have sample um, policies. And so when we meet with the superintendent or whoever at the district, um, we'll provide those sample policies to help, you know, get that ball going. And so that's, that's a, a helpful piece. No, and that's really important, right? Because, you know, schools have so many things to do that, you know, just telling them, and now you need to develop another policy is like, 
who, who, where I'm going to get the information. And I think that's great. My, I would just want to reiterate the point of maybe to that policy, you, you kind of flag that there are some schools within the district, let's say Fresno or Malaga and for Fowler um, school district that have their, they have a monitor on site. And probably that should be the first resource that these schools should be looking at, you know, like why would Edison High have to get the information from your monitor in Garland when they have their very own at the top of the roof? You know what I mean? So yeah, I yeah. think that's that's the part where I'm that at least I think it's so important and is missing in that that uh, puzzle of communication that you have with schools. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and and our, our goal is to incorporate that into the tools. Um, other comments or questions before I go on to kind of my next question for you all to get feedback on? Well, my next question is about, um, you know, it's one thing to get the schools on board, but we're also looking for ways to get parents and teachers on board and we brainstormed a little bit around here about you know do we do a flyer do we do um you know some type of outreach piece something that we can give to the schools is it a fun little ruler or is it whatever it might be um one of the suggestions that came up as a discussion point is peach jar i don't know if anyone's familiar with peach jar and i would love to know if you all use peach jar if it's something that you think there is a cost to us and that's fine we have we have the funding for it but the idea was to maybe just um in in ab 617 communities connect with um those schools and those schools then the way i understand it i'm not familiar with peach jar but i mean you're shaking her head so maybe she can clarify the schools then send out messages to parents so the idea is is to use that when we have these poor air quality events. And I mean, I don't know if you have any thoughts. No, I I think that would be a great idea. But obviously, there we have two experts here, Isabella and Estela. I do know uh, that pitch that pitch whatever the name is substitute all the paper flyers that the schools were sending out before. It would be like you have to be sorting through your kids' backpacks to find the flyers, right? At least I had to, uh, <laughs> but you know, now you get it in your email, you know, you get all these flyers about these opportunities sometimes even outside of the school, like there is this, you know, training or this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I think, yes, it costs, but I think that that would be a, the easiest way of getting to all parents in the schools um, without adding a, an additional burden to the schools for doing that. But I, I would love to hear Estela and Isabel. Sí, muy cierto. Nayamin, es cierto lo que dices. Es este una buena una buena oportunidad de, de involucrar a los padres por medio de las escuelas. De asegurarse de, de que sí manden la información en las escuelas. Y sí, me parece perfecto. Yo lo que iba a decir, este, sí, 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 está bien la idea, um, nada más que a veces este, los directores no, no quieren sacar como muchos flyers. Um, para mí en este caso sería que lo mandaran en correo electrónico y también otra, otra de las maneras cuando miden el, la calidad del aire es cuando ponen la bandera. Aquí en la escuela ponen la bandera cuando está mal el aire, ponen una bandera. Cuando está bien, también la ponen. Oh, uno momento. Ana, you're muted. Isabel says, yes, I agree with Nayamin. Um, a lot of the flowers that we get, that's a good idea. That's a good start. And then Estela brought up. Um, she says, yeah, she agrees. But also a lot of the flyers, the principals don't want to push out all the time. So she suggests emails. And another one she suggests is, um, she always uh, looks at the flag. Uh, the schools still use the flag. And that's a good way to can let I, parents know. Can I ask them really quick? So Estela, Isabel, si ustedes cuando ya sacan las escuelas ya no mandan flyers en papel, pero 
reciben los mensajes que mandan de Pitch, una, como un programa que reciben mensajes del distrito o de la escuela. Por correo electrónico. Sí, muchas veces de correo electrónico o mensajes de texto, pero sí, sí los mandan. Sí, pues también. la mayoría de veces aquí en la escuela, la Leavenworth, aquí lo hacen por correo electrónico. Okay. Y Bien. nada más ponen el mensaje de la calidad del aire por medio de la bandera. Es que ponen... Pero, este pero ¿qué, le, ¿qué les parecería la idea de que en vez de que pongan una bandera, si por ejemplo la, la calidad del aire está mala, que les mandaran ese mensaje a los papás en vez de poner la bandera, ¿qué tal los papás que no recogen a los niños de la escuela? sino que así los papás pueden recibir por un correo electrónico el mensaje y también no nada más de las escuelas, sino directamente del distrito del aire. Ajá, sí, sería, sería por bien. medio de, de la, del correo electrónico y también, este, no sé si también estaría bien hablar con los del distrito unificado de Fresno para que ellos también mandaran el mensaje ya a las, a las escuelas o a lugares donde está contaminado. Porque en veces los directores no lo quieren hacer. Y este, para mí sería mejor también con los del Distrito Unificado de Fresno. All right. Can, yeah. All right. Yeah. That, that was, was a lot. lot. So, I can, I can, yeah, so and I can count. Has, okay. And I can count. And I can count. And I mean, and, you, and, and I will get a complete. So, basically, what they, uh, Estela said is yes. Uh, that would be great to receive the information uh, uh, from, from you guys that are district, but she thinks that it's important to still work, that you work with the, air, uh, the school district, because sometimes, you know, it's kind of like the information might get to them, but they don't share it with the parents. So, but so, I, you know, she's kind of making the point I was making earlier that it is good that, you know, and you have more information, good for you, right? But the, the problem is when you don't receive information. So I think that to me, really, what is a key element to all look at it together and tackle it together is really identifying the flow of information within the school. What happens when the information, when it reaches that contact person that song talks to at the, at the school district, What does that person do with information? I think that's where the problem is. So definitely when the air district starts sending that information directly through the parents, through this speech, whatever, or, you know, we are gonna go around and, and kind of take that away. But eventually I think that that's something that system-wise the district, the school district needs to improve. Because it's one example of, you know, you guys need to be using this information the right way. So I guess, you know, it would be, it would merit a good meeting with the people within the school district to figure out, okay, what, what is not working? Where, where is that, you know, gap in communication happening? Um, the other thing that I was thinking though, right now, you know, um, I know that you guys have, Obviously now you have the app, you have RAN and you know, and I think one other way of, of also going around these um, glitches in communication could be, uh, what about a, a, a targeted campaign to sign parents from the AB617 schools to sign up for either the app and or RAN? So that way, you know, again, they receive information from the school, from the air district, from a text message. But right now, I think, you know, you guys do have Facebook ads and all that. But honestly, for whatever reason, sometimes it's like, you know, and I've seen it because we're doing it right now. We're helping farm workers um, register to receive the, the alerts right now during the wildfire seasons. And if we just give them the number, like this is where you go, they don't do it. You got to, you know, have someone that is going to actually do it for you, if you will, so that you guys like, oh, next time that you know, I'm receiving the notification. There was a level three to, today in North Fresno. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that could be a, a really good uh, way of making sure that the information is getting to the parents. Um, another weird question. Again, I'm. We've got some experts here. I'm not the expert. Do schools still have like, 
like Estella and Isabel, are there events that you go to the school? Like, is there, are there school festivals? Is there carnivals? Are there events where we could be at that event and do exactly what Naimeen just said, help you sign up? Uh, por, en, en la escuela donde van mis niños, no, hasta ahorita no han na, hecho nada de eventos. Isabel says that the school that the children attend to, they haven't done any events. Okay. Well, we... Um, hey, Jamie. Oh, yeah. Hi. This is Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. At my son's um, school, he goes to Centennial. Um, they had City of Fresno employees out there helping parents get registered on the Fresco app. Oh, so, that's great. But, and they were set outside of the gate. They were not in the school. So they had like a little canopy with the Fresno Go app and they had staff out there and they were helping um, parents download the app on their phone. That's great. Was that just on a normal school day? Yeah. Yes, and it was, yes, it was on a Thursday or a Friday. I, I, exactly. I think that's an excellent idea. Either you say you send the staff, other staff to in the morning when kids are being dropped off or in the, at the end of the school day. So it doesn't have to be a special event. I mean, right. you already see people, and by the way, unfortunately, a lot of parents idling, waiting for their kids, and you're like, it's not even hot, turn your uh, engine off. But anyhow, that's another story. But while well, they are there, you know, like, hey, you know, you, and, but that this is how you do it. Because I, I have seen, you know, um, people that, oh, I'm going to put a table, and then the, the staff that you send, they're like, yeah. Waiting for wait. No, you got to have a tablet and yeah. walk around in the line and say, "Hi, Mr. Blah blah blah, Mrs. La la la. Would you like to receive text alerts to receive the to know what the air quality is? It's very simple, and I can help you. And you get it done. You know. So, I would I I would suggest that you do it in the afternoon when they're picking up because in the morning parents are dropping off and keep it pushing to get to work. So um, pick up is easier and it'd be a better turnout and you probably get more parents respond and be able to download the app for them. Great, I like that idea. I have another idea. What about uh, you know because this is going to be like we will have to try everything. So definitely if there's events, if events start coming up next year, like, you know, I know that many schools had again, the football games. So, you know, a table during the football games, people are like, you know, like wanting to kill time, even if they're in the line to buy the hot dog. Um, but also what about, you know, there's mo many schools, high schools, especially, they have already the need for the students to have some, you know, volunteer hours, some community service hours. So some are done through their leadership classes or through, you know, other ways. So what about ident identifying the same youth are actually, you know, getting credits for, for, for doing this thing um, in their same school with their same parents. I like that idea too. I wanna go back, Isabel, you look like you're unmuted. Did you have something else to add? No, no, nada más es eso, que sí es buena idea que este, compartan la información de la calidad del aire a todas las familias, para todos estar enterados de, de cómo estamos, en qué calidad estamos cada día. No, no, she just agrees that it's very good information to distribute the air quality information to all the families, and especially when there's bad air qualities. Um, in very exciting news, I clicked to go into the English channel and was able to hear, I don't know who's translating today, but I was able to hear the real-time English translation. So we'll, we're slowly transitioning over to how Zoom is supposed to work, but we're not going to 100% do it yet. Estella, I see your hand raised. Sí, este, me parece muy buena la idea de Nayamín de involucrar a los jóvenes. Sí, me oyen? Más o menos. ¿Ya me oyen? Sí, sí. Sí, este, me parece muy buena la idea de Nayamín de involucrar a los jóv
como haciendo voluntariado en, en las high schools para que así ellos um, hagan lo que está diciendo Nayamin. Sí, me parece muy buena la idea esta. She says it's a good idea to involve the youth, uh, like high school students, to disseminate this information. She likes that idea. Yeah, I agree. Plus, it's just fun to work with young people, um, which is a perfect opportunity for us to give some props to Nayamin. Um, she and her team worked to pull some Goodness, I don't remember how young they went. They were like middle school students. They went that young um, to do, uh, it was a kind of an EJ leadership program. And I know some of you were involved and it, first of all, looked like it was a lot of work. And it also looked like it was absolutely fantastic for those young people. A couple of Fridays ago, there was um, kind of their, their presentation of their work and I was super impressed. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to say a word about that, but. Yeah, well, that I, I love the idea of keeping them involved, you know, because they already have this motivation. Many of them are in your, in these schools. So, you know, why not? Like, let, let's get them involved. I mean, I think that there's just, if you put the right information to and give these opportunities to the kids, they're just gonna run with them. So, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I can certainly already connect you with, with all of them. That would be great. I think that's, um, let's tentatively put maybe some type of meeting or gathering together for them in, um, you know, maybe in January after folks get back from the holidays. That would be great. I mean, I'm glad. I had in my head to reconnect on that. And I'm glad that Estella's comments made me think about it. Um, other comments, questions, ideas. Sí, porque como a mi hijo que va en la preparatoria, él este, le están pidiendo horas de voluntariado. Entonces sí se me parece muy bien la idea que está diciendo Nayamín. Yes, like my son who go goes to high school, they ask him for volunteer hours. So I think that's a good idea to get them involved in what Naomi said. Now I'm wondering if uh, Anna's just copying every English word that our English trans our Spanish translators say, because that's so good. I finally, I feel like our dream came true with this translation. So thanks to everybody. Um, I want to go to Oh, I was gonna to go to Ed. It looks, oh, Ed and Kimberly. Ed, you haven't mentioned anything yet. I'd love it if you had um, wanted to add in here. No, I, I appreciate uh, Naimin's uh, thoughts. I really think that it is successful when we get more of the students involved. And uh, I'm very supportive of that. At, at, at all angles, it, it begins to develop that ownership of, of uh, of clean community. Great. Um, other comments, questions? Well, I've taken some notes today about, um, and what, I, what I'm gonna do is, is now kind of add to our little outreach plan with some of these suggestions about, you know, targeted um, campaigns, um, send physical staff to be at school sites for afternoon pickup to sign people up for RAN or the app. Oh, yep, there is someone on the phone at 814. I don't know who that is, but you're welcome to unmute yourself. For some reason, I thought maybe it was Kimberly, but I guess it's someone different. Hello, it's Laura Rosenberger. I had some ideas and maybe we can buy air monitors for the kids who want to put them up and purple air monitors that their parents agree to buy internet. But there's a temp top you can, there's a handheld air monitor kids can carry around and monitor their whole network. So maybe there'll be more coverage than just having it in the school. But if someone lives on the other, uh, other side of the school district or somewhere like closer to the industries, it might be a good place to put it at their home. And, and some kids would love to do that. We can definitely look into that. And do you need any help um, calling the schools or anything? Or At this I point, I, we've got contacts that we're gonna follow up with, um, but we will definitely let the committee know if there are, uh, if there are opportunities for the committee to be involved, I definitely think, you know, if we do events or if we do direct outreach, there, there may be opportunities. 
Thanks. All right. So um, I didn't, I had, I still have a little, so peach jars, an okay idea, but it sounds like the one-on-one -on -one at the school site talking to parents it is, is going to be kind of the main push with our AB 617 communities. It's, it's just like with any other strategy, Jamie. I think that a combination of strategies would allow you to really hit different people that have different preferences of how they, they want to be communicated with. So for example, having, you know, like if you, like my example, I, I, I don't drop my daughter to school anymore. So if I, you were, I would miss you if I, if you were there only when pickup time happens, but I do receive emails. So you know what I mean? So I think mm -hmm. it has to be like, it's not one or the other, but, but all of them, because that will allow you to reach different people. Gotcha. Sounds good. Any other questions or comments? All right, well, we're gonna write up our uh, kind of um, additions to our action plan. Uh, uh, we would love to have someone, if anyone wants to be our person who reports back to the subcommittee, I'll put the notes together and um, make sure that we uh, have something clear for someone to report back to the subcommittee, but um, I see Kimberly unmuting. I can do it. Great. Thank you, Kimberly. I'll give you the um, notes that we've put together. Okay, thanks. And we'll keep moving forward. Um, the holidays are basically here, so our next subcommittee meeting will probably be in early January. And at that point, I'm hoping to have some offline conversations with Nayameen. Um, and by that point, maybe we can actually be headed down the path of you know, engaging some of these young people. Um, and we'll have already done some work to see about when and how we might actually be physically out at schools and physically, um, or I should say, uh, uh, getting the peach jar and some of the other stuff up and running. So it's not that we aren't going to do anything, but um, I know I know you guys would love another meeting, but oh uh, no, well I don't mind another meeting. My only concern, Amy, Jamie, right now is as you know, towards the end of the year and the beginning of the when the, the New Year's Eve is when we get those peaks of high pollution sometimes yeah. people are burning their fireplace people are doing all kinds of stuff so i i hope that at least we can do some some sort of communication right before the holidays so that we are not missing this opportunity of people knowing about um, how to get that the text alerts in this time of the year when we could see peaks we will at least make sure that we have something out to our schools telling them how they can sign up for uh the the sj air text alerts the uh, ran app or the my ran website yeah that's a good point yeah and we do have time to do that awesome all right are there any uh last comments megan I was wondering, and maybe this would confuse the issue, but would it also be worthwhile to try and bring up the wood burning issues at the same time you're doing RAN to the schools or parents? That's a great idea. Yeah, and it's incorporated into our app and it is on our website. So if folks sign up for the app, they actually get the wood burning status. Um, I, I do, I am, always sensitive to the fact that you know it, it depends on your audience as to whether or not they can absorb multiple messages but i definitely think that we can um, share with uh, especially the administrators teachers um, some of the wood burning information to give out to schools even if you just have flyers there while you're in front of the school and available like in spanish Hmong, um english just to hand out and they'd be able to go home and read them and you can do you could just do that education piece there as well while you're registering them for that i i agree with kimberly i think that that a flyer those that that want to know more about it will take the flyer and it can be made fun we can you know have uh, pictures and 
and uh, you know examples so that it's easy to understand, but don't try to jam a whole bunch of information into one piece. Yeah, we can definitely have something like that. We and we have that type of flyer material. Um, the the question is, I don't know how many schools that we're going to be able to be kind of one on one with prior to the holidays. I do think we can definitely share that message electronically and then with the yeah. administrators that we we have we hope to be either verbally maybe, talking to. Maybe maybe that will be a great pilot for that pitch jar. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that's a good idea. One one other aspect I was thinking about that also was with the planned replacements of the wood burning inserts or whatever if that has a flyer or if that's way too much information to try and communicate but i was just thinking the cert measure of trying to do that too yeah when we talk about wood burning that's actually the first thing we usually talk about just because it's the carrot that makes the whole program a little bit easier for folks to uh you know, kind of connect on. Uh, we definitely would we wouldn't mention one without the other. Great, thanks. All right. Any other comments or questions? All right, Kimberly, I'll write up these notes and get them to you. If not today, then early next week. And I hope everyone has a lovely weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, everyone. everyone.